My name is Alice Ann Casey, and uh, I'm from New York. And a uh, Muay Thai fighter, a currently two-time U.S. champ, um, North American champion, and went to Thailand, got to compete in the World Cup, and I'm a bronze medalist in the World Cup. <laughs> I've been fighting for a couple of years now, but I've been in martial arts for God, 13 years. I have black belt in Hapkido, which is a Korean martial art. I moved to Utah five and a half years ago, and I've been doing Muay Thai for about five and a half, same amount of time, about five years. So uh, we're at the weigh-in, and uh, you're fighting a uh, one ten. Yeah. Right. Have you uh, seen your opponent yet? No. I bet she's here somewhere. I know she's here. I'd like to introduce you now a good friend of mine, Allison Casey. Yeah. Allison's fought here a number of times and always given us nasty fights. Got you. One hundred and nine pounds. All right, it's the killer's turn. 110 pounds. You have that much of it. My weight is 110. What do you want to say to her? 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 He cannot speak English, that's why. But just to show you in the ring, he don't say nothing. She don't say nothing. Oh, I'll say, I thought we had a discrepancy here with the whole heat thing. Ding on the way She said she gonna bust you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she gonna kick you. you. Oh. <laughs> what, what do you have to say? <laughs> I said, homie, better not touch my ass. <laughs> Great fight tonight. Okay, I have a lot of respect for you and good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, that what happened at the weigh in? Oh, <laughs> so I guess her trainer or her manager. <laughs> it looked like he was going to come down and be like a, a translator for her. And I. Oh, we, now we can't kind of drunk. I never met this girl from Japan. But I sought her out, I gave her a hug, and I bowed to her before the weigh in. Her trainer was going like this, but you couldn't hear what he was saying. What he was saying was, my girl's going to kick your ass. How are you going to talk to me like that when I just approached her in this very respectful way? Actually, it's just funny because what set me off and he was just trying to be theatrical, and of course I should have just known that, but I took offense to it. He like, went to touch my ass, and then this is, out of, this is out of control. So I got mad, and then from there on I was like, oh, I don't like her. Normally I try to stay calm. Almost every time I give my opponent a hug, not in, in front of cameras, but uh, you know, just to show her, just to make a point. You know, it's not about you. I'm gonna just try to do what I learned, and whatever. But um, if I feel disrespected, it makes it a lot easier to hit him. 
My name is Kwame Stevens. I'm a fighter, still fighting in a uh, training alley. Training her is just like a big, huge pleasure because she is a big sweetheart with a heart about that big. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this fight tonight? I think she's going to hurt this girl. I really do. That, I would say the thing that this girl has on her side that she trains with Sachio uh, Shibata, who is like by far pound for pound the best woman fighter in the world, but Shibata can't help her when she gets in the ring. So I can see Allie is ready physically. I know she's ready mentally now that the training of the Japanese girl pissed her off, so that's going to help. That is really going to help. So now just, uh, we'll just we get from around around and see what happens in the first round then we'll just change the game plan according to there but I see her winning tonight. Sally what have you been up to for the last uh, 13 hours or uh, since we last talked? Sleeping and eating. I feel good right now. Good. Yeah. I My opponent's total enigma which is fine with me. I really want it to be uh, decisive one. I learned my lesson last fight. I thought I knew something about my last fighter, and uh, I was absolutely wrong. I'll be staying close to her, and I'd rather just beat her down, you know, beat her with body, and I, I plan on using my elbows and um, a long knee. I really want to hurt her in the first round if I get a chance to. I, I want to hurt her in the first round, just establish that I'm not there to play with her. And uh, I have a feeling she's going to come out really wild, so I don't know how I'm going to handle that just yet. Did you feel like there's any other things that you learned from that last fight you had besides like your mental state walking and maybe, you know? That's the most important thing that I learned is that I, my, my mental state of mind has to be so sound, <laughs> you know? That I, I can't be so emotionally involved in what's going on around me. And I knew that coming into it because I knew there'd be a problem going into it, but I, I didn't realize that how hard it would be for me to just um, not be frustrated and irritated. <laughs> expect to lose it. I kind of underestimated the girl I was with and then all kinds of shit happened and and even now I'm kind of making excuses for why I lost that fight. But it's not really just an excuse. I'm trying to understand why. Why? What happened exactly. People treat you different when you win. Um, people don't know what to say to you when you lose. I, and it's not a big deal actually. And we, we get over it. You know, everybody, not everybody, but most people lose. You know, it's not a big deal. It's a, like, I don't cry after I lose or something. Um, but I might get a little defensive. <laughs> it's really not about winning. If, if um, With all that said, it's not. If I had just applied what I was supposed to, then I would have at least achieved something. But because I lost my freaking mind um, and didn't have any control, that's a defeat. You've seen your opponent and all that. Yeah. Oh, wow. She's, she seems so. She's like a little chameleon. The first, one minute she's like ready, the next minute she looks really sweet. She's odd about that girl. She's not consistent. <laughs> So I was training with, also, like I said, with Andrew Polis, my boxing trainer, and I did that because uh, I, uh, I, one time I fought one of his students and she kicked my ass and she didn't really kick me. <laughs>
<laughs> she just just boxed the crap out of me. <laughs> she didn't do the wrong thing. But it was clear that she won our sparring uh, match or whatever. I just tracked Andrew down. Uh, my name's Andrew Polis. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, had a fairly uh, extensive amateur record and I've uh, had a few pro fights and now I'm kind of uh, leaning towards training. So, tracked him down, went to another gym I'd never been to, opened the door, watched him spar. One day she just showed up by word of mouth, some, maybe somebody I believe, maybe Griff, maybe. Somebody directed her towards me. And then I just was like, can I train with you? And he kind of blew me off. Um, not in a rude way, but he was like, I don't know, you know, I got a schedule or whatever. In all honesty, I, uh, I, I avoided her for a long time. I didn't know how to take I wasn't really looking for people to train. I, um, um, I was kind of, I was just so new in it. Um, I, I avoided her for probably, oh good, I gave her a run around for probably a good month and a half, two months. And it turns out that uh, I don't think, he said, look, I'm just not that comfortable training women, I don't think women should fight. Uh, I'm not used to, uh, to uh, uh, young ladies. Uh, following me around, badgering me to train them. It was, <laughs> kind of caught me off guard, I guess. I just uh, didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> His energy is just so, um, like he's real old school and he's he's got like, I don't know, he's just, you could tell he's a special trainer, special person, he's got another, that quality that, that these trainers have. I find that she was just so persistent that I told her one day she came in. And I asked her if she brought her clothes and of course she did. So I asked her to uh, go ahead and change up and, Let's start working out. That was a couple of years ago, so I've been working ever since. So anyway, he finally agreed to it, and I was so glad because now we're just best buddies. I mean, I just do, I developed these relationships with my trainers where you just want to. They're just they're just so they're like a family, and I, and there really hasn't been that much time between us. But you spend this intimate time together. You know, you're in each other's face literally. You're sweating. They're you know they're taking care of you. I'm sure you know she's very hyperactive, and uh, she's prone to overthink things so damn much that it's uh, it, it, it tears away from her, and, and, and there's she's focused on worrying about this and about that and about that instead of focusing on what she's trained, how hard she's played, trained for it, and I just try to keep it, um, you know, that that we put in the work at the gym this is the cream on the top. We've taken our lumps at the gym. We've We've been through the sprints, you know. We've been through the drills. We've, you know, we've done everything. We've done the running, everything. This is the fun part. It's going to be very simple. Fundamentally, she's going to be probably surprised. I think it's good. You watch a woman's fight, 
it may not be the most technically sound, or not even that. Um, the fundamentals are usually great. It's uh, they're not uh, not as as pretty usually in science in terms of the science of boxing. But you will never. I, I've never seen in all the years of, of watching women fight since I first started fighting. I've never seen uh, lackluster or uh, low punch output women's fight. Truly, we don't want to cancel you. You know that when the tie, and I said, oh no, I don't want to let you down. So I said, I, I don't care. So I call last minute Japanese coming in. And, you know they are beautiful. They're like, okay, we take it. Yeah, thank you very much. No, oh, yes, you're welcome. Okay, and you will do good. Thank you. I know it. Okay. Bye. All right. Okay. Bye. You have. In terms of marketing, you know. The fitter men are, the more sexy they are. The fitter women are, the more masculine they look. And it's like, hmm, how can we benefit the promoters? You know, you get someone like Pastor Tati, he's a fucking genius. Right? So, besides, well, I'm going to make all my girls really pretty, calling Tati's angels. I think it's a smart move on his part to make his girls look like girls and have this, you know, kick-ass technique. There, there's definitely commercial appeal, and, and I love it. But when it comes to the real deal, it's not always that sexy and that beautiful and a little trickle of blood. I've seen plenty of threads on forums and uh, MMA websites that talk about women fighting and men don't want to see women fighting. You know, I went through that with uh, my boxing trainer. He said, look, you know, I really don't like training women. Let me just tell you right off the bat. That's what he believes. He's an old school guy. He doesn't want to see women get hurt, busted orbitals and, you know, forget about the busted nose. For women, it's a different experience to watch a fight. You know, they might, they might be sheepish, they might freak out, they might not like it, but there are a lot of women, when they see it, even though they don't even know anything about fighting, and they don't care to fight, they just get a special energy out of it, and um, it's about having strength and courage, and, and I've seen that, and they've expressed that to me, and I, I dig that. That's cool. That's real cool. Anyway, everybody, I'm, I'm Steve Moscati. Uh, me and Rick, and possibly Joe, will be repping the fights tonight, okay? Just want to go over the rules and everything. You know, this is Muay Thai. Um, so there's elbows and knees. We're trying to run a pure Muay Thai program here in the United States so that when you guys compete over the world, you don't get slaughtered. We're all neutrals as officials. We have no affiliation with any of these uh, gyms or anything like that. As far as the elbows go in Muay Thai, they're made to cut. They're made to, uh, if you get cut, pretty much you can consider your fight stop, okay? I, I don't want any dirt, dirty Muay Thai. You know, uh, if, if you're, I know there's off balancing when you're doing your knee strikes and stuff. Um, so, but let's not have any uh, over the hip throws. This is in judo, okay? Um, as far as the knockdowns go, we realize as uh, referees that you're off balance a lot. There's a lot of off balancing. So what's gonna determine a knockdown to us is your attitude after you hit the canvas, okay? If you get Jump right back up with your hands up, you're ready to go. We won't call it a knockdown, okay? Unless you just totally get caught with the right hand, fully squared on your feet, and you crumble. Then that's obviously going to be a knockdown. When you knock your opponent down, go straight to the neutral corner. We'll count the guy out, and you'll be done. All right, good luck, everybody. I don't want to get hurt. That's what training, it's part of the reason I train so hard at, and I, no, I don't want to get hurt, but. I'm a small fighter. Because I'm smaller, it's more likely that I will get hit to get inside. So, so I do worry about that. Uh, I, work, I worry about that mostly because my because I'm a I'm also a professional. I have a professional job, and I don't want it to interfere with my job. I want to keep them separate. They're two separate realities in some in a lot of ways, and I do not want to introduce it in any way that's going to hurt my job. Ali has been working with us since February 1999. It's been nearly five, six years with the company. And she's now the director of uh, communications and uh, training. She represents the company in its best uh, form. Uh, absolutely ambitious, aggressive, and yet a very professional individual representing Fat Pipe at trade shows, in front of the press, as well as uh, in front of customers. So I fight with Bearded, she like kneed me in the face like five freaking times, which was totally illegal. 
Um, I don't know if she did it on purpose or not. Um, anyway, it happened. I, no one ever called it, whatever. I had like this big lump on my eye. I arrived home on a Sunday. The next day I was flying out to Phoenix to open a new office and there I was with a black eye. I was so nervous about it. But I covered it up pretty well. But man, I was fretting that. I mean, I was really sweating it out because my, my, uh, my boss already has a problem with me fighting. Um, even though he's been supportive, he has articulated to me that he doesn't like the idea of me fighting, doesn't get where I put myself in harm's way. You know, we never thought about it. I think she's a very professional person. She keeps her work separate from her activities. He's more, on more than one occasion has called me into his office and taken upon himself to, uh, for whatever motivation, um, you know, warn me about what could happen as if I never thought about these things before. And uh, how do you feel about a woman's sort of recent involvement in combat sports? Do you have any? You know, I don't have an opinion at all about it. Unfortunately, when you introduce Ali, it just kind of comes along with the title because I think once people see her, her arms or her physique, they're, they're going to ask what she does. There's always a comment. Always, 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 always. Every situation, even people I know who know me for more than a year have a comment like once a week about hey, fighting, or hey, look at that, or hey, make it, what about those guns? And people are always talking to me about getting a shirt that say, check out the gun show, and, uh, it was, you know. And I, it sometimes it's cute, sometimes it's fun, other times I'm like, what's the big deal, man? It's, it's bragging rights in the office that we actually have a, you know, nationally ranked, bronze medal winning, you know, fighter. And then when people see her, she's so petite and so cute, it's, it's kind of hard to explain that that's the boxer, kickboxer that I'm talking about. In a way, you kind of feel like, one of my friends said, you kind of feel like Clark Kent as uh, Superman because, you know, there you are, you're all suited up, you're all nice, neat, and clean, and you're all uh, so put together, uh, very good and professional, and uh, then you go into the gym and, you know, you're, in a, you're, you're a totally different person. It's a weird thing, you know, it's a weird reality, and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy that I have this opportunity to in, be myself in these different aspects, and be able to really have like a full spectrum of, uh, of, of like a physical, mental, and emotional reality. That's it, just blood pressure, that's it? Yeah, I guess. What was your blood pressure? I think she said, whatever it was, it was excellent. She said, that's excellent. It must be 120. You must be 60, as relaxed 64. as you feel. Relaxed, man. That's good. Look at you. Hi. Sakusen is my first side channel. I got as a world champion. Um, He's well known in the Thai world. He couldn't have been a more gentle, kind individual. Um, he's very knowledgeable, obviously. He's been fighting since he was 10. And he started to fight because, uh, well, mom and dad needed some money. So his reality, you know, my reasons for fighting, his reasons for fighting are absolutely different. Our first session together we did hand pads and I got I was so lost in that moment I that could have just gone on forever and I just felt like I had all the energy in the world and I wanted to continue and it was so exciting for me and I, that's when I knew I really loved it he would say things like don't be mad when you don't be angry when you fight you know be happy if they hit you smile and now even in my 
I mean, I guess you could just watch the fight tape so you could see that I smile. Like my fight with Christine Toledo, uh, my my shoulder had dislocated, and uh, and I uh, couldn't use my my right hand that well anymore. And I just thought, this is a time where I could cry, <laughs> I could lose my mind, or I could smile like Sam suggested. I did, and I went up laughing. And uh, my friend, I could hear my friend on one of the fight tapes. Um, she was behind the person videotaping it, and she said. Is Alan laughing? And I, and I was laughing. I was laughing because I thought, you know, someone's right. You know, you gotta enjoy the moment, whatever the moment is. Um, I mean, in the fight context, you know, some things you can't enjoy. But uh, in that case, I knew I wasn't gonna get hurt. I knew I wasn't gonna get knocked out. It's just I thought it was so unfortunate that my shoulder was dislocated, and that I was having, you know, I was very distracted with the pain in my shoulder. And that was something that Sam in particular taught me. He taught me how to kick. Taught me how to do how to move uh, like a tie. Sam, you remember Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Hi, sir. How are you? Nice to see you too. What is that? Right, well, well, just the athletes, yeah, like, the Olympic yeah, swim team, the Olympic wrestlers, all of them use, <laughs> use it. It's just about my sponsor. Pretty good? Yeah, please. I use the recovery. Let me drink a little bit out of it. Damn good. Damn good. Kwame Stevens uh, has been with me for a long time too. I mean, relative to the time, amount of time that I've been fighting, and uh, he's one of Sam's students. He actually followed Sam, I think, in two country or two states here in the United States. And I know one of them is Indiana, the last place where Sam was. And when Sam came to Salt Lake a couple months later, Kwame came. Kwame was with me through, um, like, I had a year where I was just, uh, I where I was competing in um, competitions that that uh, had. Uh, titles associated with them. Uh, Kwame was the guy that cornered me. Kwame's the one who traveled with me and kept me calm and, and um, you know, just took care of me. Kwame's got a totally different style than Sam in terms of um, his kicking, like uh, the technique is different, the way you bend your body, you know, timing of the kick, um, all that kind of stuff. That's really important to a fighter because that, that stuff can be confusing. So what's, what, what's gone on is I've gone from pure tie to then boxing, and then now I'm training, and I'm still a Thai fighter, but I'm training at MMA gym. I'm the, I'm the only Thai trainer, Thai fighter that trains there. I don't really practice kicking in my sparring. I kick on the bag and I kick on pads, and it's been great. It's actually worked out very well for me. I'm just the highlight of you. I came here to fight. <laughs> I didn't come here to fight no damn thing. You, you think you can walk for 30 yards yourself? I could, I'm, I'm on. Are you feeling good, up to I'm, it? I'm feeling in shape. Good, you know? good. I got a little something in me tonight, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Get a go, right? Let's go. If you don't go, I'm not going. Come on, let's not go. <laughs> it's rotation. Okay. I don't yeah, like them all. Right I'm shy. I just want to stay in here. I don't want to go anywhere else. I'm very shy. I just want to stay in here. Are you guys fighting elbows? Oh, you've been practicing your elbows, haven't you? Because I know you love them. This is Miss Alice and Casey. <laughs> All right, you guys get out of here. Get it on. Go warm it up. Cut it off. We heard your words yesterday. Besides, she doesn't speak English.
over there for a minute for the private moment. Part of it is this kind of solitude, like solitary uh, experience, even though I'm sharing it with my exploring partner and I'm having a great time with, with her and like my teachers and the people at the gym and in my family, it's a lot more confined. There is a spiritual aspect to it. Um, with Muay Thai in particular, there's a lot of, there's ties to Buddhism, and I'm not a Buddhist, but I've had the opportunity to in, enjoy um, meeting Buddhist monks and going to Thailand and being, you know, just having a taste of the culture, which is beautiful, beautiful culture. We're here at the Buddhist temple in, um, in Utah, and uh, out of respect for my teacher, and also because it's such a peaceful, beautiful place to come here, and. Uh, and the tradition that my teacher showed me, I come here and get a blessing, and the monks here are very nice, very kind, and they uh, bless me and any of the other fighters that come, and also will bless the ornaments that we wear into the ring. With Buddhism, there's a lot of uh, the history of, of fighting, and there's a lot of for lack of a better word, superstition around fighting and what, what you do in the ring. Like my teacher, when I bought new sneakers, he wants me to fix, like uh, pretend to bite my sneakers so it doesn't hurt my feet. And then when you go in the ring, you have to go over the top rope and not the bottom rope. Um, women in particular, if they have if they have a, their menstrual period, they can't. They're not supposed to go in the ring. The Thai culture uh, did not accept women fighting very easily. As I understand it, women have only been fighting for about six years. So that means they've been fighting as long as me. And not to say that there aren't great female Thai fighters, because uh, when I went to Thailand last year, um, some of the gold medals were Thai girls. So Thai girls and Thai women. There are certain areas in Thailand where they, where they accepted the idea and they want to train women. And obviously they trained me and the other women on the US team in Thailand through the Fairtex gym. Um, Fairtex is a worldwide known gym. And maybe in the smaller gyms, um, that's not an easy thing to do. The discipline that I learned in martial arts, uh, the two martial arts I've done, um, has helped me with other things. The whole point is when I'm training, I'm actually living in a moment, and I'm not thinking about the future or the past or anything. I'm like really in the moment. So all those things kind of fill me up, and it keeps me focused. And I'm, um, I appreciate that. I feel, I feel more confident just mentally. I am more put together when I'm training. <laughs> It's like I've, I fight to test why, what I'm learning when I train. The training, I love the most. My name is Sherry Isaacs. Um, I train here at Elite with Ali. I do mostly MMA. Um, I spar with her all the time. She kicks me around a lot.
work hard. Uh, we work to the point where, you know, sometimes you might feel nauseous, you might feel like throwing up, you might throw up, uh, you might want to sit out. <laughs> but uh, we, we just, that intense, like, physical aspect of it is great. When you're a chick, you're expected to be, like, you know, you're expected to be not work as hard, and you're expected to be a little wussy girl, you know, it's bullshit. So, you know, we come here and we work hard, we train hard, we spar with the guys. We try to kick the shit out of the guys every chance we get. You know, they hit us, we laugh at them. We don't let them know they hurt us, they can't hurt us. We're, we're a good match, um, and we give each other what we need in terms of having that real experience when we're sparring. It's great. Allie is like, just what I needed. I love feeling strong, I really do. And I always felt that way since I can remember. You know, I just want to lift a suitcase when I was a kid or whatever. I was always a tomboy. I mean, that's for sure. That's true. Um, I like being challenged. I like being physical. I mean, if I'm not physical, if I'm not training, I'm not happy. When I'm ready to train for a fight, um, this last time around, I'd wake up at 6, get to class at, you know, 7, train for two hours, do and go to work. Um, right after that, I'd go back to to the gym, train, and all, and I have a very strict diet. I turn into a machine and I focus on my strengthening and my conditioning. My family, they don't get to see me. My friends don't get to see me. When I'm training, I look, you know, I, like I said, I'm on the A-Cup team. I mean, I lose my shape, but, you know, I look muscular. I'm definitely a competitive person. Um, I think I mellow it out quite a bit, actually, because I got nothing to prove really to anybody but myself. It's, it's pressure to win because you want to say thank you to people. You really do. I mean, you want to win for your family and your teachers and all the people that took their time instead of being with their family with you, you know? and some other people who are in my life are concerned that I'm, you know, I'm getting too old, I'm gonna get really hurt, I'm not gonna have the opportunity to have children. <laughs> I was married before. Um, a lot of these issues I didn't have to think about because I already assumed that I was gonna have a family and I still was a fighter and I still had a husband. And I kind of fulfilled my thing. I had my job, I, you know, everything was kind of set. But once the marriage dissolved, um, I'm kind of dealing with issues that I haven't dealt with since college. You know, part of the thing I was talking about, about learning how to fight and learning how to apply it, is, is dealing with issues, you know, fears, basically, being afraid. And I don't want to make decisions because I'm afraid something's not going to happen. I don't feel like I have a choice. It's like falling in love. It's anything you feel passionate about, you, you just make room for it, man.